In this video, I will show you how I managed to get my perfect Kenner Six Million Dollar Man collection complete with custom figure stands. And stay tuned because you may just see my most audacious unboxing yet. Welcome back. Now here I am with my Kenner Six Million Dollar Man. Now if you'd seen my video from a few years ago, you would have seen how I got this figure brand new. But there were a couple of issues that were bothering me. One of which was the fact that despite it being sealed in a brand new box, the plastic film had come away and that had allowed a bug to get in and basically die on the back of his jacket and leave a horrible imprint. Well, that's something I cannot change. And in terms of display, you see it from the front, you won't be seeing this dead bug stain. So I'm not going to bother changing that. Now the other problem I had was this was the second version with the bionic grip and the grip I had was broken. The hand was you know, permanently clamped shut. But for display purposes, I was not happy with how that hand looked. So what did I do to address that? Well, first things first, I looked at eBay. Let me put this guy down for a second. I went on eBay looking for a new right arm and one option to me was to get one of the critical assignment arms and those are quite costly. Uh, I had a few saved on my watch list but they were starting about 25 to 30 bucks per piece and that was just too much for me. However, the other day, I saw a listing for a complete, but when I say complete, I mean a fully formed figure. And it came with an additional critical assignment arm. So I figured, okay, if that arm of the figure doesn't work, I can always use the critical assignment arm. Well, lo and behold, let me show you. Because this came to me, and when I tell you the price and what it came with, it will blow your mind. So as you can see, I've already made the switch. So my $6 million man has perfect arms, perfect outfit, aside from the dead bug stain on the back. But all in all, for a display piece from the front, this is as good as you will ever see. Now, how did I do this? Well, there was a listing on eBay for a naked $6 million man that came with an additional critical assignment arm. And I thought for $15, I will take the naked body plus this arm and either this would work or the arm on the figure would work. Well, as it is, the arm that came on the figure, absolutely perfect, looks amazing. But as a bonus, the seller included the uniform. Now, yes, it is sort of riddled with holes. It's a bit dirty, but it does have the badge on the chest still. So I got this plus this for $15. Now in my thinking is, I will be able to sell this on quite possibly for more than I paid. And when I show you the extras I will include, I will definitely come out on top. So this critical assignment arm I thought I could use, but the skin tone on this hand didn't really match the skin tone on the left hand of mine, but this one, which was his regular arm from this $15 figure, definitely fits the bill. So this, for me, absolutely perfect. Um, no one's going to see the back. Yes, I know it's there, but when it's on display, that won't be a problem. But we have to remember one fact here. When I was a kid, I had the first edition Six Million Dollar Man that came with the engine block. And this one, being the bionic arm version, came with the orange girder. So let me show you how I've addressed that. Plus, I will show you the most amazing figure stands I've ever seen. So if you have any experience with the Kenner Six Million Dollar Man, you will know that you absolutely do need a figure stand to keep these things upright. So I thought at first just a generic plain stand would work, but in my search, I found this custom stand. And this is just absolutely amazing. Not only does it have the photograph of the Six Million Dollar Man, it also has the same pink color 
that was used on the boxes. And of course, this is my original box that came with this guy. But as I said earlier, mine was the first edition, so I need to recreate what I had as a kid. So this steel girder was of no use to me, but I did find for a very good price, the engine block. So now for display purposes, my $6 million man is just amazing in my opinion, of course, but the stand just really does set things apart. And because this box is really battered, I mean, as I said earlier, I bought this figure brand new and absolutely it was brand new. It had never been removed, but given the state of the box, the bug had managed to get inside. So my thinking is I'm going to sell the other figure I just bought with the steel girder, with the paperwork. Someone's going to enjoy this. This is of no use to me. I can get some good money back. And in the end, I have my $6 million man with the engine block. But I didn't just buy this stand. I bought another stand. Stand by. Ooh, a lot of stands here, but stand by and you may just see the most audacious unboxing yet. So as you can see, I also have the custom stand for Maskatron. And if you've paid any attention to my previous videos, you will know that I do have Maskatron. However, there is one slight catch and that is that Maskatron is brand new in a, well, when I say a sealed box, the tape is corroded, but this is a brand new Maskatron. Now, the reason I got this a few years ago was I was in search of a Maskatron because I had, you know, Steve Austin, I had Maskatron as a kid. So I'm trying to recreate what I had as a kid, but finding a really nice example loose is not easy. And this one came up a number of years ago for a pretty good price and I jumped on it, but it's stuck in a box. I want to enjoy it. I want to touch it. I want to remember how it felt as a kid to play with this toy. So it's been in possession a long time, maybe a year, two years at this point, but the time has come to release him from the plastic prison that he finds himself in. And yes, I am somewhat nervous. Uh, this is probably the most audacious vintage unboxing I've done yet because to most people, despite not being perfect, it's a pretty good display piece. But when you have a stand as cool as this, you really want to get the figure out. Now, the one thing that is causing me some concern is his white jacket because the, the loose versions that I've seen, the jacket is you know, dirty, it's got stains on it. I want mine to be perfect. And this, in my opinion, is the only way to get a perfect example. And I should mention as well, it comes with all the catalogs and things. Uh, once this is out, and I think it's going to be out, I've, you know, I'm very nervous about this, but I will sell the box and all the documentation plus this, and I will cut this as carefully as possible so as to preserve it so that if someone wants to put their Maskatron back into it, they can do so. But just seeing it like this has me so itching to get into it and just give it a little play. Just remember how it felt to click everything in place. And But the one concern I have is the white coat. I don't know if it's kind of yellowed over time or not, but there's definitely a hint that it's not quite as white as it could be. But there's no point fannying about here. Now I did put in a fresh blade so I can do a nice clean cut and I will try and do this in such a way that I do preserve as much of the packaging as possible so that the next owner of this box, if they so wish, can put their Maskatron back in. But, uh, ooh, you know what? I don't even, you know what? People have told me that I should feel terrible about doing this. Why should I? This is mine. I want to enjoy the figure loose. This was the best option I could find to get the perfect one. So if you don't like this kind of thing, please stop watching now. But anyway, 
let's get Maskatron out of this plastic prison. And as I said, this is a brand new blade, so hopefully I can do this in such a way that it can be put back in if necessary. So we definitely got some lift off here. Uh, you know, ultimately, people that complain about people like me unboxing vintage, I think they do it from a perspective of jealousy. I think they would love to be able to do this. And ultimately, it's my toy to do with as I please. And this new blade has worked an absolute treat. So there we go. So there is the Maskatron face. Uh, we have his human arm right here. And uh, I've got to be honest, just seeing this again does bring back a lot of really good childhood memories. But, okay, we've got Maskatron and the jacket coming off in one piece. I hope this has not faded over the years. You know what? I don't think it was ever pure white to begin with. And this is looking not too bad, actually. I think I've made the right decision here. Yeah. I think we're going to have the best loose mas maskatron on YouTube. But, uh, yeah, this is nice. This is a nice throwback. And you have to remember as well, unlike the Six Million Dollar Man, Maskatron did not come with socks. Although I think you can buy socks uh, from a custom maker. I don't need to do that. And then if I remember rightly, you could lock the head. Oh, there we go. So you had two options. You could lock the limbs and the head in place, but then you could press the button to eject them. And I just ejected the head there. So put that back in and let me lock it. There we go, that's locked. Um, now we need to get out the other items here. So we have the Steve Austin mask, which actually is a far superior face to this one. I get the gimmick on this one where you can look through the bionic eye, but it looks a bit ridiculous. When Maskatron wore the Steve Austin mask, there we go, that looks far better. And is it a similar size? Um, slightly smaller, but it does look really good. So we have a couple more accessories to unbox here. This was the sort of clipper arm. Uh, and just squeeze this one out. There we go. And I think you sort of pulled back on this. There we go. Excellent. Let's just stick this one in for now. And that clipped in nicely. So there you go. There's Maskatron with his sort of clipper grasper type arm. Not bad. We have the Oscar Goldman and the sucker arm. So when looking at these on the secondary market, the sucker arm is always bent or even missing the suction cup. So here we have a perfect example. So get the arm out. And okay, this is a bit stuck. Let me see here. There we go. Yep, that is perfectly straight. Most of these are bent at right angles. So I'm very happy with this. And last of all, the Oscar Goldman mask. So. Come on. Almost, almost. This one is playing hard to get. Okay, there we have it. We can cast this to the side and get this knife put away. There you go. There is the complete Maskatron. Let, let me just put his jacket on. Uh, if I eject the arm, put on the human arm, and lock that in place. And is this one locked? Yep. 
And if I remember rightly, it went on kind of back to front because Mascatron had the, the panel in the back here, which I'm going to be gentle with because it was a case of just sort of bending the plastic. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to bend that. But the point was you could keep the extra masks in the back here and you would also open that to push out the sort of computer panels on his chest which just seeing them again also does bring back a lot of really, really good memories. But anyway, let's try and get his jacket or tunic on. Um, as I said, when you look at these on the secondary market, these shirts, tunics, jackets are horribly yellowed, dirty, stained, ripped, missing the sort of studs to hold it in place but here we have a really perfect example if i can just get this thing to go on that's pretty straightforward two and one more one three and just sort of bring that down a bit yeah in fact let's put on mascatron's face now this was the one that I always tended to use as a kid because I had Steve Austin. Uh, despite not having an Oscar Goldman, I just liked Mascatron's human face. And, e, having a hard time getting this off. All right, there we go. Nice, wow. So we have the figure stand, as I said, earlier so in terms of display just bring this up to his crotch we there we go uh, don't know how that looks from the front but in terms of my display i'm thinking i will keep him looking like this because that's how i played with him most of the time as a kid and just have his accessories to the side but we now have the most perfect looking six million dollar man in Mascatron with amazing looking custom stands. And I'm sure you'll agree looking at this, this is the perfect uh, display piece and a real throwback to my childhood. Uh, once we stop filming, I'm gonna have a real good play with these guys because it has been decades since I've had them looking like this in my possession. Again, with most of my childhood toys, these were sold in the early 2000s on eBay. I don't remember how much I got, but looking back, I do regret doing so, but seeing these here now in my possession makes me incredibly happy. And the addition of these figure stands just makes it so much better. I have never seen a six million dollar man collection look this good. And I am over the moon to finally get my hands on this Mascatron. Like I said, it's been a couple of years since I've owned this. And I'm so happy that the jacket hadn't faded. Everything is intact. We even have the straight sucker arm, which is extremely rare and someone else will get to enjoy these boxes in addition to the other action man, the critical assignment arm. At the end of the day, I am happy and that's all that matters. So please let me know in the comments, did you have these figures as a child? And if so, did you enjoy them as much as me? Probably not, but. So we just had a bit of a camera malfunction there, but as I was just saying, if you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like. Please share the video if you can. Make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned for more videos from All Things 80s.